Uh, my name is Dimitrios Trulinos, and today we will be discussing, uh, we'll be presenting actually our work entitled Extending SUMO for uh, Lane Field Microscope Simulation of Connected and Automated Vehicles. Uh, this is a joint work with my PhD supervisors and research associates and is uh, funded by Traffic Fluid. Now, uh, Traffic Fluid is a near C project which uh, uh, targets two core uh, principles. Uh, the first one investigates two core principles, the first one being uh, lane free traffic in the sense that uh, vehicles do no, lo no longer adhere to the notion of uh, specific lane placement and uh, observe the two-dimensional uh, road, both the longitudinal and lateral axis. Uh, the second one is the nudging effect, uh, which can be thought of as uh, front vehicles being pushed by the ones on the back that want to overtake so that they are accommodated. Uh, you can find more information about traffic fluid and our activities at the provided website, which I can also link later at the chat. So uh, in this work, we present the current developments of our lane-free microscopic simulator, which is in fact uh, based on SUMO and is an extension uh, of the open source code base. So it has two main parts, the first one being the extension of the SUMO application. The second one is uh, the use of a dynamic library to interact uh, with the main application. So we choose SUMO and I suppose everyone here is familiar uh, since it is an open source project. And uh, while TrackEye API exists already for uh, online monitoring and control of the traffic environments and also many projects that utilize both Sumo and Traka exist, uh, we decided to actually use directly the open source code base of Sumo and extend it uh, so as to meet the needs of, uh, uh, of our endeavors. Uh, the, uh, and the second reason is that uh, Trakai, the Trakai also imposes certain uh, communication delays, especially since we are also interested in large scale simulation. So, uh, constant communication, especially when we want to control the vehicles, uh, requires a lot of uh, 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 results in a small bottleneck there. So the highlighted feature, uh, we have internal corporation of lane-free movement. Uh, controllers for uh, vehicles in lane-free environments uh, can be developed within the dynamic library. And through the API we provide, one can uh, control the vehicles and also retrieve information. Uh, we tried uh, for all the developments that we have done already to retain the cross-platform support of Sumo, so can work both for Windows and Linux environments. And the API was developed so as to meet uh, the needs of uh, the project, current and projected ones. So starting from uh, the lane free vehicle movement within Sumo, uh, we provide two alternatives. Uh, the first one is the double integrator model. Uh, in fact, this already exists uh, within the Sumo infrastructure through the ballistic update option, uh, which uh, considers constant acceleration between discrete steps. Uh, but of course, this is only for the longitudinal axis. So our extension here is that we did the same thing, but uh, follow the same principle, but for the lateral axis as well. Uh, we did not utilize the sublane model of Sumo because, okay, uh, it provides uh, the realistic depiction, but it is designed to, uh, to be combined with lane changing maneuvers. So for that reason, we found it more appropriate to do it internally uh, ourselves. Uh, now, again, the Dublin Aggregator model is appropriate for highway environments and for vehicles operating with high speeds. Uh, since uh, we have the assumption that the orientation of the vehicle is always in parallel to the road. Uh, for certain applications, we are interested to have a more accurate depiction of uh, vehicle movement. So for that, we also implemented the bicycle kinematic model, uh, which considers that the front wheels are steerable. Therefore, we control uh, both the acceleration and the orientation of the vehicles. So, 
uh, as mentioned already, uh, and depending on the choice of vehicle movement uh, dynamics, uh, the user needs to provide within, from the dynamic library different acceleration, uh, different control values. There will be either the both two acceleration values for longitude and lateral one for the dominant grader, or just the magnitude of the acceleration and the steering angle for the bicycle model. Now, we will discuss some uh, highlighted uh, functionalities from the, uh, of the API. One of them is the fact that each vehicle possesses a desired speed, which can be either obtained on or parameterized through the API. This also means that this can be done in online, so a vehicle can have a dynamic desired speed uh, through the course of a traffic scenario. Uh, of course, we can monitor online uh, the vehicle's current status, longitudinal and lateral position, same thing for the speed, the animations, etc. Uh, vehicle information can be obtained uh, for each road segment and it's sorted in ascending order according to the longitudinal position. And there are event-based functions uh, that, uh, so that the user is notified when the human vehicle enters, exits, when a collision happens, uh, this may be also be important for uh, applications that we want to uh, use dynamic memory allocation. So these functions are used for technical reasons as well. Uh, so with uh, these functionalities, there is flexibility to emulate V2V and V2I communication schemes and re relevant applications. Another thing is that uh, one can place loop detectors in a road network and through the API, we can online, uh, in an online fashion, obtain uh, the, the measurements of loop detectors. Uh, moreover, we can uh, acquire information uh, such as density and average speed of vehicles for a sub-region of a specific road segment. And this information can be also requested for a specific vehicle type, for example, the pink vehicles. Uh, within the appointed region. Uh, something very important uh, for our development is that when designing uh, a controller for lane-free, uh, considering a lane-free traffic environment, uh, we want each vehicle to be able to observe downstream and upstream. So it provides us functionality so that each vehicle can uh, observe both upstream and downstream, but according to its routing scheme. Uh, and also important is that the vehicles observe uh, properly the relative distances, both in the longitude, both longitudinally and laterally. And uh, something uh, crucial here is the fact that since Sumo handles the turning operation automatically, the vehicle controller does not uh, observe this uh, as a matter of fact. It observes that uh, its route is simply an unfolded straight line. And for that, the relative distances are, uh, are adjusted according to this uh, assumption. Now, uh, one of uh, the developments includes the way we handle uh, demand in traffic scenarios. While in a regular lane-based environment, we could consider a time gap or space gap policy for each lane, uh, here it is not, uh, we need to somehow extend this notion by taking account the available lateral space. Uh, to this end, we have devised two different methods to, uh, for different requirements. And again, for that, the user needs to specify uh, specific uh, uh, parameters uh, such as time gap value, departure speed, the type of uh, the vehicles, etc. And uh, the first mod, uh, method that we have uh, uh, has uh, given a departure speed and the time gap value. It can it estimates the desired space gap, meaning that within that region. Uh, we scan for vehicles downstream and properly restrict uh, a set of available lateral regions. At the end of this process, a vehicle, a new vehicle will enter if it, uh, if it has an appropriate uh, region to do so. Otherwise, it uh, will remain in the virtual queue of Sumo and attempt to enter again at the next step. 
We see here a video simulation. This is for 12,000 vehicles per hour. And we see we have multiple uh, uh, vehicle types with different dimensions. As we see, each time the vehicle tries to find an appropriate placement uh, to enter in the road. Uh, now, the, the second method uh, more, more or less extends the, the notion that we have in lane-based traffic, that is that slower vehicles will tend to move, uh, will tend to be towards the right lanes, whereas faster vehicles will be towards the left. So this is an extension of that idea in the sense that we have a range of speeds, and this is uh, mapped with a linear interpolation on the initial lateral placement of the vehicle. Uh, so, and also for that process, we define a select distribution of a distribution of choice so that it is retained for the demand that we specify at an origin point. Here we also see a video simulation. This is for a lower demand. Uh, and here is for a uniform distribution, meaning that the vehicles will be uni uniformly placed uh, along the lateral, for, the la for all of the lateral space available. And if we measure the, the flows for the two different methods, by having an extremely high demand that it's not achievable. Uh, of course, we see that the first method does uh, provide a much uh, an increased flow. Uh, and while the method two is, has a, a limited capacity, but of course the benefit here is that we have this uh, notion of uh, the mapping between lateral position and desired speed, and also the fact that the, we have a uniform distribution uh, of vehicles entering from different uh, lateral placements. Uh, finally, I will mention, uh, I will briefly mention an extension we're already working on, and that is lateral boundaries uh, based on the vehicle's uh, route. Uh, again, in, lane, in a lane-based scenario, a vehicle following a feasible route will just need to change lanes appropriately so as to, uh, to follow it. In our case, since the vehicles do not actually observe lanes and do not have specific lane placements, uh, we want to extend this the same principle using uh, sigmoid functions that dictate the available lateral space uh, given a route. In this case, we have a vehicle uh, that wishes to exit from the off ramp here, so we gradually uh, limit the available lateral sp space and we, exp uh, we design the controller appropriately so that it is always within uh, these bounds. And the next step for that is to do online control of the boundaries level uh, through the API. And uh, this feature is quite important for an emerging application uh, for microscopic simulation on that application, uh, which is internal boundary control for two-way traffic streams. And uh, <laughs> that concludes the brief presentation. Uh, thank you very much. And of course, uh, let us know if any questions. Thank you.